Good morning, everybody. It's Duke. Uh, there are a couple of things I just want to talk about for a minute. Uh, nothing important. Anyway, I bought uh, one of these little jump, jump packs. Oh, I guess it's been about a year ago. I've been using a lawnmower. I think I did a video on it, but I'm not sure. Uh, the first one I got is one with a flip. And it was called Tack Life. And I bought this one. It's called Beat. Beat it. Uh, B-E-A-T-I-T. -I -T. Uh, right there it is. Now, I'm not being paid for this promotion. It's just that the only thing I've been starting with it was car, I mean, uh, was uh, lawnmowers. And it, it, it'll crack a lawnmower with or without a battery. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's just like the rest of them. It's got the flashlight, the USB ports. You're not even seeing what I'm showing you. All right, it's got the flashlight, USB ports, and right here is where your charger clamps go, or your booster clamps. And this is, it's hard to open up, especially when you don't have fingernails. I always get mine cut off closed because if I don't, I'll chill. Sure. Go ahead, next door must have let your chickens out. I didn't know she even had any more. Anyway, your booster clamps go right there. I'm not even sure you can see what I'm doing. Uh, it's not that early, it's about 8, 8.30. And it's got the little display right here. You can plug it in, hook it up to your battery, and it'll tell you right here uh, how many volts you have to crank. And uh, it comes with a little little charger and a charger wire. And they could make these wires a little bit longer. I mean, you, this is just a, just about the same adapter you use on a cell phone. Five volts, five point five volts, ten amps, or three amps. I could use it on a cell phone. Uh, but the end of this is, it's a mini USB, but it's an oddball. I mean, it's a little bit, it's too big for a mini USB and too small for a standard USB that goes in the back. But it charges up in no time. <clears throat> but a neighbor came over to me yesterday. He said, uh, can you give me a jump start? I said, yeah, sure. I started to jump my truck. I jump off like I I tell you what, I need something I need to test. But I've never had a reason to jump start a car and I said this way I can test and see if it actually works. But he'd never seen one before. And uh, he didn't think he'd do it. Well by the time we got through playing with it, we jump started an old Ford pickup about Early 70s, I'd say, I can't remember what, what year you said it was. It was either 70, 71, or 72. It looked like my old 72 Chevrolet, but it was fleet side. Boy, it had a, one of them crew cabs, it had a real long bed on it. Anyway, the first time uh, we boosted the truck off, it fired right up. And that's with a little help from Ether. It had a little 306 in it, six on, straight six. <clears throat> and uh, it dropped down to I think around 85 uh, volts and uh, I think it's what it was anyway it was 85% it's 100% now because I charged it up now you can also take your phone before I forget it, take your phone. My, my phone won't do it. My old phone, my S6 did do it, but I got a, just a cheap Galaxy. I mean, cheap, cheap Samsung now and it won't do it. But you can lay it on here 
and it charges it magnetically. And you can also use a cable, USB port cable, uh, right out of here. And uh, it also has a 12, 12 volt DC, but I don't know if that's chart for charging or if that's output. It doesn't say. 12 volt, 10 amps. And then right here where it where the charging cable hooks up, it says output, input, output, 5 volts, 3 amps. So it's in, the same going in as it is going out. I don't know. Let's see. It says quick charging. I got that on wide view, but you can't see me at all. See, get down here. There we go. All right. Now, the way I did my other phone is I turned it on and then I just laid it on there. So it's not going to work because it comes on. Now, I'm going to leave it right there because, according to the, phone, or the thing, it says it's charging. But according to the phone, it's not. All right, apparently it won't work on this phone. All right. But, uh. We charged that, we, we fired that truck up twice. The battery was, it was so dead that when I disconnected this this char, this uh, booster, the, it would shut off immediately. So that told me the alternator wasn't doing any good. Uh, and we realized that right off the bat, the alternator was not working in the truck. And then he, he had went to a car auction in Mississippi somewhere during the Hurricane Zeta <laughs> and bought a uh, I think it's 2016 Ford diesel that had been wrecked. It had been a load, uh, 18 wheeler turned the curve, lost its load, and it fell on the truck. <laughs> Tore the whole side of it out. But the motor and everything else was still good. He's going to take the motor out of it and put it into this uh, Ford. Uh, Crew cab. He's gonna take the motor, transmission, and the uh, he's gonna put it all in there. The uh, GPS, backup camera, and all that good stuff. He's gonna put it all in the other one. But anyway, oh, uh, he said, "You think it'll start that diesel?" I said, "I don't really know." I said, "We can try it." I said, "It's supposed to be able to," and that still had 77 percent. Showing on on that little booster pack, and it fired that diesel up just like it right there. It was a it was a six point seven uh, six point seven diesel. I don't think I've ever heard of a six point seven diesel, but it was diesel. It was definitely diesel. Uh, and what was so funny is my truck rattles louder than it does. My truck's not a diesel. But anyway, uh. I like it, man. I mean, it works good on lawnmowers to crank them up when they, when they bring them in here and they got dead batteries on. Uh, and I actually brought a battery back to life with this. Uh, I left it on overnight. It drained it big time. And, uh, but I, instead of putting it on my trickle charger, I've got a one of those smart chargers and it's not very smart because it's old. Uh, It'll charge up, but I can't get it charged on three amps. It don't charge up only five amps above. So uh, I put one of my uh, battery buddies on it. And I let it sit on there until it's fully charged. And I checked the battery the other day and it still had a full charge on it. And it's, it was been a, it's been a week. 
so it means it's going to hold. I'm glad it is. It, that gives me an extra battery around if I need one for customers. They don't want to buy a new one or something like that. But I've been, I have been asked to do something. Uh, I just happen to remember. I never did that, uh, that, uh, I was tagged by a bus on, I never did it. So I guess I, I guess I need to do it. Try to do it tonight. But anyway, uh, one of my customers asked me to see if I could put a motor on a bicycle for him, which I mean, I've done it before. I'm, when I was a kid, uh, we used to take our big bicycles and we'd put a little three horse motor on it. And uh, shoot, I had a thumb uh, throttle that we rev it up with. And then the brakes were just the manual, just the same brakes on the thing. You didn't, didn't use a pedal at all because you, you had to disconnect your, your uh, sprocket. So, uh, but he want, he's wanting a motor put on it. I'm not sure I can do it. I've got to do some research. He's wanting one of those two cycle motors. And then yesterday after I saw the bike, it might wind up being an electric bike because I'm not really sure I can do it. Uh, they've got four cylinder, uh, four cycle engine out too. I looked online. I just don't think the frame's big enough. So I'll see what y'all think. Let me turn you around here. And we'll lower you down. There's the bike. Now, like I said, I've never put on one of those uh, 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 two cycle motors or the four cycles, but this here might be too big and this here might be too small. I know you got a bracket that goes around here, a U, U clamp, and it's got to sit right in here at the four cycle and the, and the two cycle too. Uh, but this is a fat tire bike. That, that bike, that, that wheel. <laughs> five inches wide. Four and a half, five inches wide. Yeah, that's, that's 26 by four, so it's four inches wide. I think it go by the rim. Yeah, you got that four inches. And if I make the uh, uh, make it a electric, the motor can either go on the front wheel or the back wheel, and then the battery pack can sit right here. The motor and motor can sit here or sit right here. Battery pack can sit right here. Uh, that's pretty stout. Uh, luggage rack. Like I said, I've got to do some research. Now, I've never done an electric bike, so that's going to be fun. Uh, and I'm not sure. <laughs> I just know down here you, you're, you're required to have a headlight on your bike, whether you ride it day or night. Have you seen it yet? His headlight is a flashlight that he taped to the handlebars. Hey, it works. There you go. Sorry about that. But anyway, might need some wider handlebars too, of course. If you can steer it with that, you can steer it with anything.
Put me on a glove. I forgot to put one on yesterday and the guy here in his grass, I mean these leaves started breaking them up and everything and he got that finger full of dirt. Powders. Make some gloves slide on better. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be working with in the next few, well maybe. I don't know if I'm going to do that bicycle or not. I mean... Can I remember how to do it? And when I was a kid, we had all the time in the world. And we did it for free, we did it for ourselves. I've never had to charge anybody to do it. He wants to know how much it would cost. I have no idea. I have no idea at all what it would cost to put that motor on. So, I guess I'll put it on and charge them. I'll tell them what I think it's going to cost. But I'm pretty sure there's some kids around here that bought one. I've seen them on Craigslist every once in a while for sale with the motors already on them. And they'll want three, three fifty for them. And I mean, I wouldn't pay it. Because uh, those motors aren't that good. So... I don't know. We just have to wait and see. Tell me what your thought, what your thoughts are. What would you charge to put that motor on? Oh. Uh, no. Go carts or go fish. Y'all always doing stuff like that. Tell me what you would charge somebody to do that for. Because uh, I'm pretty sure you have charged somebody, but I, I mean, I've never done it. I know it's quite, it can be time consuming. Now, a friend of mine, well, used to be a friend of mine, uh, he put one on electric, he put an electric motor on a bike. But he was a techno wizard, I guess you might say. I mean, he was. He, uh, he, he, put, he had two bikes. One had 1,100 volts motor. Another one, I think, had a 1,400 uh, watt motor. And he took the 1,100 watt, boosted it to 1,400 watt somehow, and that sucker would fly. It did about 35 miles an hour, but he was a lot smaller guy than I am. I mean, he was real skinny and everything. Uh, I'm pretty sure with my weight, it probably wouldn't run over 25 miles an hour. Now, Mr. Uh, Reed, the guy that's got the bike, he's a lot smaller than me, and it'd probably get up to 20, 30, 35 miles an hour with him, too. But, I mean, I've got to put a throttle on it, got to put brakes on it. Uh, probably put a handbrakes on it, if I can find big, big enough handbrakes to fit, that, uh, fit those tires. I'm pretty sure they make them because they've got holes in the frame for the handbrakes to fit on the front and back. So we just have to wait and see. So I guess that's it for today. Uh, all I'm gonna do today is rake leaves and try to get this place finished cleaning it up because I have to do it again in the spring, even whether we have another storm come by or not. This place is nasty. And this is usually my time, I, time of the year I clean up the yard anyway. So uh, I will see y'all on the flip side. Bye now.